In the summer of 1970, Kana, an eight-year-old girl from Tokyo, and her parents travel to the small town of Aya in Miyazaki Prefecture to visit her grandparents. They had a small house and a large property which Kana reveled in running around and exploring the lush, green and overgrown countryside. Kana's parents had left her in the care of her grandparents as they tended to some commitments in the city of Miyazaki itself, which Kana did not mind at all. She loved the freedom of being in the wide open spaces outdoors and would disappear for hours into the surrounding forest. It was on the second day her parents were gone that Kana had her first unfortunate encounter with Hachi Shakusama, the eight foot tall lady. Kana was just inside the edge of the forest, happily collecting rocks to take back as souvenirs, when she heard a disturbing sound. Po, 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 po. It whispered in a deep masculine voice. Kana looked up towards the source of the sound and froze in fear when she saw a huge woman dressed in all white, with hair as black as a raven, a cold grey face with an unsettling smile and a huge hat that cast a shadow all the way down her long, eight-foot-tall frame. Kana and the woman locked eyes briefly as Kana tried to find her voice to call out, but she could barely breathe, let alone make a sound. Then the woman backed away and disappeared into the dark shadows of the forest behind her. Kana, struggling to get her legs to work properly, ran back to the farmhouse immediately and told her grandma what she had seen. Once Kana's story had been properly relayed and the gravity of the situation set in, her grandma's demeanor quickly became deadly serious. She grabbed Kana by the arms and demanded to know exactly what she had seen and heard. As Kana explained, her grandma began to weep. The grandmother quickly relayed what had happened to her husband, who, in shock, rushed to the phone to try and contact Kana's parents. They were not at their hotel, and so a message was left with the concierge. Kana, now scared and confused, asked what was going on and why everyone seemed to be in such a panic. Her grandfather sat her down and stared deep into her eyes. Listen closely, Kana, he started. It seems you've been chosen by Hachi Shakusama, and unless we can protect you, she will abduct you, like she did several other children in this area, decades ago. Kana was now in tears. What she had just been told terrified her, yet she couldn't help but want to know more. Who is Hachi Shakusama? she then asked. Her grandfather went on to explain. No one knows her origins, he said. Only that this eight-foot woman selects her victims by quietly approaching them, then chanting a po. Po, 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 sound before retreating. Within a few days, that person will disappear. She was supposedly captured by some local monks who imprisoned her in an old shrine by placing a Jizo statue at north, south, east, and west points of the ruins. It appeared, however, that somehow Hachi Shakusama has escaped. Kana was then taken into the most secure room in the house. The windows were boarded up and small balls of pure salt were placed in each corner of the room. You must not leave this room, not under any circumstances her grandmother strictly instructed. Never? Kana's voice trembled. Not until your parents return to take you home, she replied. Then I'll be safe? Kana asked. Yes, her grandmother sighed as her gaze dropped to the floor. Then you'll be safe. However, you can never ever return to Miyazaki. Kana began to cry as her grandmother left the room. Don't leave me, she wailed. Her grandma explained that she could not stay within the room and for Kana to be sure to lock the door once it was closed. Night fell over the countryside and Kana, alone and cold in the dimly lit room, sobbed quietly, wondering when her parents would return to take her home. Several hours into the cold night, she heard her grandfather call out to her. Kana, are you okay? If you're scared, I can come in to keep you company. You don't have to be all alone. Open the door, he said. 
kind of leapt up and moved over to the door to unlock it, but then was overcome with an icy chill as she approached and realized that something was wrong. Her grandfather's voice was somehow different. Open up, the grandfather asked again. It's safe now. Kind of looked to her side, and she could see the salt in the bowl slowly turning black as she heard the sound. Pull, 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 emanating from the other side of the door. She backed away into the center of the room and cried uncontrollably for the rest of the night. Morning eventually arrived, and so did Kana's parents, who quickly took her into their arms and into their car. They exited Miyazaki immediately, sadly, never to return. Once back in Tokyo, Kana kept in touch with her grandparents, and she felt an eternal sorrow that she would never be able to visit them again, and that they were too elderly to travel. This sorrow was even further amplified when several years later, her grandfather passed away, and she was unable to attend his funeral. Then, just last week, Kana's grandmother called to give her some terrible news. She had been diagnosed with cancer. Her grandmother then asked Kana if she would come see her one last time before she died. Kana was confused. But, Grandma, she started, it's not safe. It's fine, her grandmother went on. That all happened a long time ago. You're all grown up now. I'm sure it will be fine. Are you sure? Kana asked. I'm sure, came the reply, along with the bone chilling pull, 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 which made Kana drop the phone, retreat into the corner of the room, and relive the horrific feelings she had felt that night when she was in her grandparents' home, alone in the dark.